any doubt, the absolute greatest forward that has ever put on a pair of basketball shoes. He wasn't just its biggest star. He was the league. Then in 1976, in part to acquire the doctor, the ABA was absorbed by the NBA. When the leagues merged, Irving was acquired by the Philadelphia 76ers. Irving joined a 76er team that was as wild as he was. They are the Philadelphia 76ers, the greatest collection of individual talent ever assembled on one basketball team. The 76ers were really um, the team, I think, that really brought that other style, brought that other energy into the NBA. Because not only did they get Dr. J, they also had George McGinnis, who was also a very free-flowing kind of player. They had Dal Dawkins. So the 76ers were really like this, this traveling circus. I had the rub roaster, the bun toast, the turbo saxophonic delight dunk that you go up and swivel your hips a little bit, a little bit for the girls. People used to get mad, and this is no lie. People used to get mad when they missed our layup line before the game. This is warm up before the games. We were doing some crazy things. As the Sixers' popularity began to spread, they acquired a national following. Every city he went to was a sellout. And when you get to that arena, fans were rooting for Dr. J, but rooting for their team. And as long as they saw the doctor perform and do something spectacular, they went home happy. He put a little extra one on that one. On the other side of the country in the Pacific Northwest, there was a distinctly different team making a mark. The Portland Trailblazers, a franchise just seven years old, was finally shedding its expansion skin and coming into its own. And they were doing it thanks to a completely different kind of star. There have been basketball players more talented than Bill Walton, and there have been basketball players more unselfish than Bill Walton. But there has never been a player so talented and so unselfish. And the Blazers perfectly mirrored their counterculture center. We had an incredibly intelligent team that loved to run and loved to pass the ball and really had no ego problems on the team in terms of who got the statistics, who got the recognition in the paper. Portland would manage to upset their way through the Western Conference playoffs. And when they arrived at the NBA Finals, they met their polar opposite, the Philadelphia 76ers. That 77 championship series between Portland and Philadelphia was a perfect contrast in all the different elements in society and culture that were going on individualism, the showmanship of the 76ers, and the quiet, reserved teamwork of the Portland Trailblazers. Portland against Philadelphia was more than just a clash of styles. It was a difference of philosophy. I thought this was a moral war of, of a team that played the game right against a team that represented every evil that we then knew as possible in sport. Portland with the Sir Galahad, Walton with the, all these guys cutting off Walton. I thought it was essential that Portland win to save Western civilization. But the Blazers were again huge underdogs, and right from the opening tip in game one, it seemed like Philly's freewheeling style would prevail. It goes to McGinnis quickly to the doctor. Well, that's one way to start a ball game. Bill you know, Walton, those guys, I know they were looking at him like, you believe you? In the first two games, the 76ers would overwhelm the Blazers. There is Davis. Collins off now, Dawkins. The whole Philadelphia 76 of the whole aura surrounding them was one of intimidation. Intimidation in terms of they had so many athletic players that could do so many things. Although the 76ers won both games, something significant occurred at the end of game two. Inside. Dawkins just ranks, goes down to the ground and jumps back up. Lucas stood up to Dawkins. Dawkins didn't want any part of Maurice. Lucas comes to the aid of Bobby Gross and is our strong person, our intimidator, and, and absolutely did not back down from a guy who was physically bigger than Dawkins. In one bold move, Maurice Lucas, although he didn't change the score, changed the complexion of the series. Instead of being intimidated now, we were angry and we were ready to fight back. But the fight not only boosted Portland's spirits, 
it demoralized the 76ers. Daryl was very upset. He felt like that uh, we had allowed Maurice Lucas to hit him in the back of the head. We had guys upset over their playing time. So things weren't good in our locker room, even though we were winning. The series shifted to Portland, and soon, too, with the momentum, as the Blazers began to play their game. What's it to Block, Walton. Picked up by Lucas. Down to Johnny Davis. Drives the middle. Look at him go. Oh. 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 I thought that they dissected us pretty good. They broke us down. They found out where our weak links was. And they continued to attack us. 9.30 to go. Walton on the line. Oh, he got it in. And Walton would make sure the Blazers would even the series up at two. What a sequence for the Blazers. The performance of the Trailblazers was probably the best team basketball that I had ever been around. Back in Philly, the Blazers kept their five-man onslaught going. Top of the screen, and Walton rolled off the pitch beautiful. And the 76ers had no answer. We were not a close-knit team. It's not that we didn't like each other or there was great, you know, dislike or anything. We just didn't have the wherewithal uh, to pull it all together. But back in game six, with his team facing elimination, Dr. J would heroically try to lift his team as only he could. Goes to the foot race, and here he comes. Doctor looks for daylight. With meaning, he took that to the hoop. Portland would effectively answer in the only way they knew how. The ultimate skill, the greatest skill, is to make the other guy withdraw. And I think that's what everybody on that great Blazer team did, was, was try to figure out how they could help their team. Portland's group effort would give them a late lead, but Philadelphia had the ball and one last chance to come together. Went into the huddle. Uh, we're talking about who's going to take the last shot. We're down two points. Uh, yeah, we had three guys on the team who were looking for the last shot. And I wasn't one of them. Here we go. The inbound of McGinnis. Drive, stop, punch, shoot, short, no go. And the game is over. The Portland Trailblazers have won the World Championship. The rivalry between Philadelphia and Portland would last only one year, but their clash so perfectly epitomized the battle of style versus substance that it remained one of the most vivid in sports history. I've never coached a better player, I've never coached a better competitor, and I've never coached a better person than Bill Walton.